Man, it was a it was a hot, hot August evening in uh, South Alabama. I call it Floribama because it's right on the the state line. If you look from my grandmother's house across Burrito Bay, the the the, the one mile uh, bridge uh, was from Alabama into Florida. So I was went to school and went grocery shopping and did all the banking in Pensacola, but but slept uh, in, in in various places in Lillian, Alabama. And so uh, that's where I was raised in the Geodome with an amazing family. And so it was one of those days we were heading to the floor of Bama. I used to play seven nights a week and twice on Sunday down there from when I was about 13 or 14 on until I was about 21 when I moved to Nashville. And so, but man, we made up for lost time and got a lot of crazy nights in, a lot of playing, a lot of amazing songwriters fests and all that stuff. Well, I was heading out to like a, probably a Monday night gig. We used to play every Monday, me and Gove Scrivener and Nick Branch. We'd alternate sets. I'd play with Gove and then, and then I'd play with Nick. And so we, we'd alternate sets all night long from like Oh God, I don't know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock till three in the morning. And so I played mandolin, acoustic guitar and electric guitar with, with these guys and they were duos. And so um, I was leaving, uh, I used to leave from my grandmother's house cause it was right there by the bridge and I'd hang out there and grab a little snack as one does or something and then I'd head to the gig. So I had this little Volvo, blue Volvo 240 DL or something like that. It was a four door station wagon. No, 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 it wasn't a station wagon. It was a four door sedan, that little boxy thing, remember? And so um, uh, I had a, had a cassette player in it and I would listen to, uh, I'd listen to Van Morrison, Poetics Champions Compose and and I'd get high, I'd get high, you know, and I'd, and I'd go to the gig. and. And like I told you in that other video, I'd roll uh, a bunch of joints uh, in, in my uncle's workshop at my grandmother's house back in the back. I'd, I'd have a big old bag of weed in there and I'd, I'd sit in there and it was like a, I gotta say, I, I don't smoke any weed anymore, but, but I gotta say it was a religious experience. Uh, let me rephrase that. Um, it wasn't a religi religious experience. It was a meditative, uh, relaxing uh, kind of a ritual, I guess you would say, to, to sit there and separate the seeds from the stems back in the day we had all that shitty weed you know and we'd we'd have a i'd have a pack of papers and i'd, I'd sift all that out and we'd get a nice big pile of weed there and then i'd sit and roll um those those uh joints you know on with some nice french light rolling papers and and all that so even today if somebody's rolling a joint i go hey man can i do that for you because it's a nice little fun ritual to do that and try to get it perfect and all that you know blah blah, blah. i was a kid and so I'd roll a bunch of those joints, you know, probably five or six of them, and I'd put them in my and I'd put them in my sock, you know, and and then um, and so I'd load up the car, mandolin, acoustic guitar, electric guitar in the back seat of that Volvo, and I'd have my rack gear and my pedal boards and all that shit back then, and I'd I'd head off out the driveway and, and across Lillian Bridge to the to the floor bam, and you had you had to drive by boat, you could get there quicker, but you had to drive all the way around the bay to get to the barrier island and across the bridge out to the floor of Bama. And so you crossed the line here and then you drove all the way through Florida and you got to the state line again down the bay. And so uh, there's a long piney road called Bower Road that heads out. It's a straight shot that takes you out to the beach. And um, you know, it's a straight boring road uh, about, I don't know, three or four miles and um, kind of swampy, you know, and so I was listening to my Astral We or my uh, Van Morrison um, Poetics Champion composed cassette and 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 smoking big old fat one, uh, you know hotter than hell. Had the windows rolled up, probably had an air conditioner that barely worked, and uh, and I was cruising. And I turned onto Bower Road and I'm cruising and I'm probably speeding, and I'm and I'm late for the gig probably. And uh, I think it was about eight thirty, and I had to play around nine o'clock or so, and I'm just puffing away, having a big old time going out to the gig and. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, a state trooper passes me. And, and I'm like, oh, wow. And, I, and then, so then uh, I see that, uh, you know, a while back, you know, back behind me, he turns around and, and he's coming up on me and he's got his, li his lights on. And so I'm like, oh, holy shit. Well, the first thing I do is I start rolling the window down because my car is, looks like Cheech and Chong uh, in there, you know. And so uh, I start rolling the window down to try to let some of the smoke out. I throw the joint out the window. Um, 
and I uh, might have reached over and even rolled down the passenger window. Well, there's nowhere to pull over because it's this nasty shoulder. It's all broken gravel and just, you know, whatever, kind of not a good shoulder to pull over, you know, real crazy. And so I, I, I kept going for a minute, you know, and I'm thinking, well, maybe this is not a bad thing that some of the smoke will probably get out of here. And, I, and I'm thinking, holy shit. So finally the guy, you know, hey, pull over your car. So I pull over. By the time I pulled over, there was now two Florida Highway Patrols, state troopers, and um, and they pull me over. And so here I am, and I'm going, I'm toast. I'm going to jail. There's no way they're not going to smell this billowing marijuana smoke pouring out of my car. I'm this little hippie kid. Probably had a Grateful Dead shirt on or something at that point. Who knows? And uh, eyes probably just glazed over, you know, looked like a you know, Arizona sunset. And so, um, so then, um, this older cop and a younger cop walk up. And by that time, now there's like at least three, maybe four cars there, cop cars there. And I'm thinking, man, I'm toast. So the, 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 the younger cop walks up to the, to the car, asks me all the, all the questions and, and, uh, and, you know, the first thing they, they ask you when you get pulled over in Alabama or Northwest Florida Panhandle is uh, they see instruments in the back seat. They think you stole them. So they're asking me, hey, you know, all these questions. Hey, are those your instruments in the back? Yeah, that's my blah, blah. I'm on the way to my gig. I work out here. We're playing. I'm late, you know. And they ain't said anything about the, the, the weed smoke, you know. So I'm like, man, this is just getting crazier and crazier. So I get out, they, you know, get out of the car. They're asking me a bunch of questions, and, and I'm, I'm going, um, man, you know, uh, and again, they kept, at, kept asking me, like, well, what's in that case? Well, that's an acoustic guitar. What's in that one? That's a mandolin. That's an electric guitar. Are you sure these are yours? And, and you know, okay, so what happened was my car fit the description of a stolen car. That's what they told me. And so they pulled me over. They kept asking me about the instruments in the back seat. Finally, I just went, I said, man, I said, you know, I said, here's the thing. I'm late to my gig. I got to play at nine o'clock at the floor. I said, do you want me to prove to you that these are mine? I said, I can take something out, you know. I could take something out of that case and play something for you, you know, and um, and prove to you that I, that I, that these are my instruments. And the, and the guy goes, one of the cops goes, yeah, do that, play us something. So I shit you not, I grabbed my mandolin because it was the lightest, closest thing. I grabbed that, I pull it out. I had a Gibson A model mandolin that I got at Gruen's probably five years before that when I was 13 or something. So then I I, um, I grabbed that mandolin and I walked to the front of that state trooper car and I put my foot up on the bumper and I put my mandolin on that thing and I started playing, you know, uh, But anyway, that turkey in the straw or something. And the old cop looked at the young cop and goes, damn, he can play it, can he? And I almost fucking fell over, man. I went, oh my God, I think I'm off the hook. And I swear to God, this is true. If I'm lying, I'm dying. The young cop, and I am still stoned to the bejesus. And the young cop goes, man, I just bought one of those not too long ago. And I've been looking for somebody to teach me how to play it. I, he goes, do you know where I can get lessons? And I said, man... I said, I don't. I said, I think you, your best bet would be to go to the local music store. And they let me go, and I got the fuck out of there. I will never, ever forget that story. Down on the Gulf Coast, man. That was one for the books. Um, I know that was kind of a long one, but man... I will never, ever forget putting my foot up on that bumper with that mandolin and playing a song for these state troopers that thought my car was stolen and all the gear in the back. I'm stoned out of my mind, higher than a giraffe's ass. And um, my buddy used to say, fucked up as a soup sandwich. I thought that was pretty good.
right, nice talking to y'all. More to come. See y'all soon. Bye.